In 2002, Duke University created a groundbreaking brain-to-brain -brain interface between two rats. Next, they networked 100 rats, enabling them to perform complex tasks as a unit. Last year, neuroscientists in San Diego attempted the same experiment on humans, sending the skills of a professional skateboarder to a novice. In 2027, a controversial professor has created the DXM Academy to bring together the most gifted young minds in quantum technology. Their aim is to achieve the next evolution of human connectivity. The opening scene shows Priest Kreutz kneeling before an immense mural of Christ. Monsignor Mosca approaches him and commands him to rise. Mosca remarks that people have been gossiping about Kreutz's work. Kreutz defends himself and asserts that the more they understand about science, the more they understand that the borders between physics and faith are blurred. He then declares that religion is obsolete, and his work can serve to rekindle the faithful's connection to the church. Mosca instructs Kreutz to open a door, and they both enter. Mosca labels Kreutz a man of science, who assumed priesthood when he required funds for his research. Kreutz's assistants await them in a room, gathered around something. The assistants move away, and Mosca discovers a child wired and connected to some apparatus. He is stunned and moves abruptly towards the child, but is restrained by Kreutz's assistants. Kreutz then takes Mosca's staff and strikes him. Five young bioengineers introduce themselves as Dylan, Agnes, Maddie, Rollo, and finally Jackson. They are all research students of DXM Academy, founded by Kreutz. They are handed a chip, which they put on their necks, followed by a series of personal questions. The next scene shows Agnes in bed as an alarm wakes them up. Jackson navigates his way through sleeping students. He awakens Dylan and Rollo on his way out. He proceeds to his office. He notices a speck of blood on the floor and bends to examine it when the assessor approaches him. The assessor questions his selection of team members, and Jackson elaborates on the unique characteristics of each of the members. Later, Jackson and Dylan watch a video of an experiment conducted at an American military base. In the video, the first man holding a gun was was able to manipulate the brain of the other into pulling the trigger on himself. Back at the academy, all the team members gather around a paralyzed dancer named Voltaire, who will be the subject of their experiments. Jackson instructs Voltaire to utilize his mind to raise his hand, but it fails. The scene shifts to the assessor informing Jackson that the management of the academy is becoming impatient after two years of no results. Sometime later, all of DXM Academy's students are summoned into the main building for an undisclosed reason. Rollo informs Jackson that Agnes will not be able to pass through the security checks due to the drugs she has taken. He also remarks that security at the academy had never been this stringent, and that whatever they are here for must be significant since they are conducting thorough biometric checks. Jackson reassures that Agnes will be fine. They all pass through the door, starting with Jackson. Then the others watch as Agnes comes through. She passes and joins them, though the computer is showing abnormal activity on the biometric check. They notice a security guard approaching them, so Jackson escorts Agnes away and the others follow. They are compelled to stop by a line of security. However, the security personnel are not for them, but clearing a path for someone important to pass through. The important figure is covered in a black hood and seated in a wheelchair, pushed by Monsignor Mosca. All the students are now seated in a lecture hall, while Da Silva, one of the staff at the academy, introduces Gabriel Kreutz. Mosca pushes the hooded individual onto the stage. The hood is removed. However, Kreutz wears a golden mask on the lower part of his face. Kreutz presents his creation, which he dubbed Enoch. It is a device that mimics the functionality of the human brain. Kreutz states that he is seeking one group, capable of dedicating Enoch to their work alone. Before he can proceed, he is interrupted by a young woman standing at the back of the hall. She questions Kreutz's motivations behind the creation of Enoch. She concludes her brief speech by urging the students to wake up, then exits. Jackson trails her out of the hall and eventually catches up with her on the rooftop of the building, where she stands on the edge. The following scene depicts Agnes awakening from a dream with Jackson present in the room. She states that Jackson saved the young woman from falling. He sits beside her and inquires about her well-being. Soon, the others enter and comfort her as well. As Dylan and Jackson step into the hallway, Jackson is approached by the assessor, who hands him an envelope, and informs Jackson that the master has summoned him. Jackson steps out in a suit, and a black car arrives to pick him up. In the car, he watches a video of his younger self explaining an experiment he conducted on rats. The car halts on a desolate street, and he gets out. Mosca then guides him down a dimly lit corridor to a door. Along the way, three hooded figures pass them. Upon reaching the door, 
It opens, and Mosca ushers Jackson inside. The light illuminates, and Jackson realizes that he is standing over a chasm. He looks down and sees Enoch below in the abyss. He is captivated and leans down for a closer examination. Afterward, Kreutz arrives and says that he once served God when it suited his agenda. He then claims that his current condition may be a consequence of his deceit. He accuses Jackson of exploiting his team members to pursue his personal objectives. Jackson denies, but Kreutz offers to assist him in achieving his quest in exchange for the restoration of his body. Afterward, Jackson rushes out to a gate and shuts it. He turns around to find the woman who challenged challenged Kreutz in the lecture hall. He envisions both of them in bed. He also visualizes her falling from a rooftop, then snaps back to reality. Apparently, the woman is not there, and it is all a hallucination. Agnes sits on the floor and writes with a quill on sheets of paper. Meanwhile, Maddie listens to Professor Marcus Deeks denounce the biotags that the students received upon their arrival at the academy. Back in his laboratory, Jackson explains his latest experiment to Voltaire. Jackson managed to revive a maimed and deceased rat using Enoch. Voltaire is stunned upon witnessing it. Stella, the woman from Jackson's hallucinations, suddenly appears. Jackson asks her who she is, but she evades his inquiries when she states that Agnes is finished. Upon hearing this, Jackson rushes out of the lab. Agnes drops her quill and goes out onto the rooftop. Meanwhile, Jackson, still running, is tripped by Stella and falls to the ground. Maddie emerges onto the rooftop just as Agnes jumps, while Jackson witnesses from below. Agnes lands face first on the pavement as Maddie screams, and Jackson is in disbelief. All the students hold a candlelight vigil for Agnes. Maddie enters Agnes's former room and sobs. Sensing someone nearby, she suddenly turns around to find Stella directly behind her. Stella is wearing Agnes's bathrobe and takes down a cross. Shortly after, Stella removes the robe and exits as Maddie glares at her. Da Silva informs Jackson, Rollo, and Dylan that a new replacement has been found for their team, which is Stella. Jackson, Rollo, and Dylan sit silently, while Stella, with her legs propped on the table, sips coffee. When Rollo inquires about her background, she identifies herself as a nanotech quantum biologist. She moves to one of the monitors in the lab, and the display alters. Concerned, Jackson rushes over to the monitor. He questions her about the changes she made, but she disregards him and departs. Stella heads to a nearby abandoned building. Some peculiar individuals utilize the facility for their dance rehearsals. The rest of the team, except for Maddie, follows her discreetly. She halts, and the dancers congregate around her, which after Voltaire is presented to her. Apparently, he is one of the dancers. At that moment, Rollo and the others burst in, with Rollo threatening the dancers if they do not release Stella. However, he calms as he comprehends the situation before him. They bring Voltaire back to the lab. Rollo wonders how Voltaire can move his hand. He realizes that Stella had access to Enoch, but can't figure out how she obtained the codes. Stella enters and claims that they all played a role in making it possible. Maddie also enters at that moment, and questions if Agnes's death also contributed because it created an opening for Stella on the team. She removes her biotag, declares the project must cease, and departs. Voltaire asserts they cannot stop because this is how he reclaims his body and life. As Rollo and Dylan attempt to follow her, Stella begins mimicking some of Voltaire's movements. Everyone is astonished. Rollo states that Stella and Voltaire are both connected on the network. Jackson accuses Stella of pilfering the codes for Enoch, but she claims Kreutz invited her. Jackson is irritated that Kreutz handed Stella all his work and research. However, Rollo counters that it is actually his research that Jackson appropriated for himself. He then asks Stella to link him to the network, and so does Dylan. Both of them hurry off to test their newfound abilities. They discuss the necessity of recruiting more individuals to enable Voltaire to move his entire body. Body. Voltaire suggests they could enlist his crew, but Jackson argues they are too few. Rollo proposes that they could enlist all the students. Stella disagrees and suggests someone must remain off the network to serve as the control. She proposes Jackson takes on the role since that aligns with his desires. Meanwhile, Mosca awakens Kreutz and puts a biotag on him. Kreutz envisions himself in bed with Da Silva. Afterward, Jackson knocks on Maddie's door while she is watching another video of Deeks. He eavesdrops at the video through the door. Eventually, Maddie answers the door and holds a large stick, about to strike the door when Rollo intervenes and leads him away. The students gather at a ball to celebrate their graduation from the academy. Meanwhile, Mosca prepares Kreutz. Rollo and Dylan begin dancing together. Then, Rollo contacts Jackson and instructs him to commence. The assessor enters at this moment. 
The initial participant is a girl named Minnie, who admits she lacks dancing skills. Rollo persuades her to give it a try. Utilizing her connection to the network, she begins dancing perfectly. Voltaire arrives with his crew, and they all acquire biotags, placing them on their necks. Dylan operates the turntable and delivers a brief speech about uniting everyone in the hall. He then initiates a countdown, and leaps into the crowd at the count of one. The entire assembly begins dancing synchronously, while Voltaire and Kreutz start regaining some of their mobility. Jackson notices that communications and scans are offline, and attempts to inform his friends of this development, but they cannot hear him. Soon, Voltaire fully regains mobility and joins the dance. Meanwhile, Jackson observes footage of a young girl, resembling Stella, ascending a staircase. The dancers have exited the building, and assembled on its steps. Meanwhile, Stella observes from a rooftop. Jackson also spots Stella on his screen. Kreutz is finally on his feet. Jackson spots a red figure amidst the dancers. He identifies the figure as Maddie, who steps forward from the crowd and removes her hood. Rollo stands in front. He recognizes her, but is taken aback by her attire. Then, she hit him with a baseball bat. Witnessing this, Jackson flees the lab. As he falls, she snatches his biotag and puts it on her neck. Her action causes disruptions on the network. She proceeds to attack the other dancers. Voltaire and some others retaliate, but she subdues them, except for one who incapacitates her. Stella continues observing from her perch. Jackson eventually arrives, but is intercepted by Da Silva, who accuses him of causing the deaths of all the students due to his ambition. She then flees. As she runs, the assessor ambushes her and begins begins assaulting her. Fortunately, Jackson intervenes. They engage in combat, and Jackson eventually defeats him, rendering him unconscious. He then approaches the injured Da Silva, whose final words being, you could have been so different, before she dies. Jackson stands amidst the fallen bodies of his friends and colleagues when he notices Stella standing in the distance. He gazes at her until he is struck by a black car. Stella silently mouths the words, I'm sorry, and departs. She proceeds to where Enoch is housed. She encounters Mosca restrained to a peculiar bed. Kreutz enters and briefly discusses his struggle to control Enoch and how he has finally achieved mastery. Stella turns to face him. Suddenly the lights go out and the door shuts. He asks what this signifies and who she is. A flashback follows to when she was a young girl and he was a priest. Returning to the present, Kreutz realizes she is Enoch. She begins to retreat into the chasm. He tries to grasp her, but she disintegrates, leaving him frozen. Afterward, Kreutz is seen standing, delivering a lecture to the students of his academy. Jackson and his team are among the audience. Stella is also present, positioned at the back of the hall. Da Silva emerges as he concludes his speech, revealing his creation, Enoch. The students applaud. Stella smiles and exits the hall. In the final scene, Stella goes to the abandoned building as the structures crumble and whirl around. At that moment, she states that this is not the end, but how it begins, a first step to the edge of a new dimension. A void resembling an eye materializes before her, and a droplet of blood falls from her eye into it. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.